Hi, this is the uh, Math 0320 test for review. Um, I looked at the test and I wrote down some similar problems. So if you go through this review and you know how to do these type of problems, you should do fine on the test. Let's take a look at the first problem. Rationalize the denominator and simplify rationalizing the denominator all that means is get rid of the root symbol uh, the radical uh, on the bottom of the fraction in the denominator um, there's a rule for radicals that if you have a fraction and a radical you can actually break um, the radical into two i can have the if i have the third root of a fraction i can have the third root is negative 16 divided by the third root of 125. So you can actually break uh, radicals that are multiplying or dividing apart, or you can bring them back together. Um, the third root of 125, if you look at 125, 125 is five times five times five. Um, so the third root of 125 equals five. Uh, try that on your calculator. Hey, let's take a quick look at the calculator and do the third root of 125. On my calculator, I'm hitting 3 first for the third root. If you can even see that. There we go. I think we're getting it. So what I'm doing is I'm typing in 3 first, and then I'm hitting 2nd the the radical sign so you see it puts the uh second uh radical it puts the three up in the power the third root of 125 and if you notice the answer is five all right so you can actually do some of this stuff on a calculator all right, so now the third root of negative 16. You can only take negative roots of odd uh, roots, third, fifth. So we can take a negative. Um, the third root of 16 is the third root of 8 times 2, right? Eight. Now, by the way, you can say negative 8 times 2, the third root of negative eight times two. The third root of negative eight, you can break this apart once again. Uh, the third root of negative eight times the third root of two. Remember I said, if you have a radical multiplying or dividing, you can break them apart or you can squeeze them together. So I'm just separating them and breaking them apart. Well, the third root of eight, uh, the third root of negative eight, actually equals 2. So this third root of negative 8 equals 2. I'm having a hard time writing the third root. Uh, and the third root of 2 stays as 2. Um, and then we are done. Uh, rationalize the denominator. There's no radical in the bottom of the fraction. And this has been simplified as, as much as we could. We've taken as much out of the radical as we could. Uh, eight, the third root of eight is two. The third, oh, by the way, the third root of negative eight is a negative two. So this is the way the answer should look. The third root of negative 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals a negative 8. So the third root of negative 8 equals negative 2. All right. Next problem. Rationalize the denominator. Uh, these are both third roots. And if you remember from the last problem, you could break radicals apart if they multiply or divide, or you can squeeze them together. 56 divided by 7. Well, 56 divided by 7 is 8. And the third root of 8 equals 2. We're done.
That wasn't too bad. All right, let's see what's next. Simplify. Uh, these are adding and subtracting inside a radical. That means you can't break them apart. You can only break them apart or put them back together if they're multiplying or dividing. Uh, here, we're just going to simplify, do all the math we can. Uh, 200 minus 75 is 125. And then if I take the third root of 125, I get 5. If I ended up with a decimal, if I try to take the third root of 100, I ended up with a decimal, then I know I can't write that decimal down unless they ask for a decimal. So simplifying a radical just means take as much stuff out of it as you possibly can. Um, solving. So the steps for solving uh problems with radicals in them get step one get the radical by itself get the root uh by itself so in other words i need to take this one to the other side it's a plus one so i'm going to minus one to both sides six minus one is five um, step two is get rid of the radical by, uh, in this case, since it's a square root, uh, we're going to square both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So we want to get rid of the radical and maybe that should actually be the step. Get rid of radical. In this case, is by squaring both sides. If it was a third root, you take the third power to both sides. So I am going to square both sides. I'm going to square this side, and I'm going to square this side. Square root and square cancel each other out. So whatever was in the radical, since the square root canceled out, is that. Uh, and, 20, and 5 squared is 25. And uh, now all we're doing is solving for X, getting X by itself. Uh, first, I want to take the 5 to the other side. It's a positive 5. So I am going to subtract 5 to both sides. Two X. 25 minus 5 is 20. Then I'm going to get rid of the 2. It's multiplying times the X. So if I divide both sides by two, two divided by two is one X and 20 divided by two is 10. And that's my answer. Now you can check that answer by plugging it in there. Two times 10 is 20, 20 plus five is 25. The square root of 25 is five. Five plus one does equal six. So you can check it. All right, next problem, solving for X. Um, so step one was get the radical by itself. Well, it is by itself. Step two, square both sides. So here we're going to square both sides. When I square a square root, that cancels. On this side, uh, to square it, you have to write it down twice and multiply it. It's x minus 7 squared times x minus 7. And then you're going to have to FOIL it. x times x is x squared. x times a negative 7, negative 7x. Multiply those two, you get negative 7x. And multiply these two, negative 7 times negative 7 is a positive 49. Um, so I'm left with x squared minus 14x plus 49, 5x plus 1. Um, when you're solving for x and you have an x squared, you need to take everything to one side and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to take the 5x to the other side by subtracting 5x. And I'm going to take the 1 to the other side by subtracting 1.
I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus 19x plus 48. Negative 14 minus 5 is a negative 19x. All right, so now uh, I have everything on one side and it's equal to 0. I have to factor. Uh, 48 is 1 times 48, 2 times 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12. Uh, I think I see the answer right here. Negative 3 and negative 16 is a negative 19. When I multiply negative 3 times negative 16, I get a positive uh, 48. So my my answer factors to x minus 3, x minus 16. Uh, when I set it equal to 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and x minus 16 equals 0. Getting the 3 to the other side by adding 3, x equals 3 is one solution. Uh, get the 16 to the other side by adding 16, x equals 16 is the other solution. Um, let's just plug those in and verify that they work. If I put 3 in here, 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. But if I put 3 in here, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. 3 doesn't work because it ends up having 3 equals... Um, Oh, I, when I plug it in, I end up with 4 equals negative 4, and that doesn't hold true. If I put 16 in there, I get 81. 16 minus 7 is 9. The square root of 81 is 9. So there's only one answer. Even though it looks like there's two answers, when I plug 3 back in, it doesn't work. It's not true. So only 16 is a correct answer. If you mark both of them as your correct answer, you would be wrong in this problem. There's only one correct answer for this particular problem. All right, next problem, simplify. Uh, we can only add and subtract like terms. Two of these minus five of those. Those are like terms, but this is not, right? There's the square root of five here. These are third roots of nine. So two minus five is a negative three, third root of nine. By the way, third root of nine doesn't reduce because nine is three times three, and I need three items, uh, like third root of 27, to get something out. Um, so those two combine to negative 2 minus 5 is a negative 3, third roots of 9, uh, plus the 4, square root of 5. These are not like terms, so we're done. That's all we can do. We can only combine like terms. Next problem. Find the domain. Um, remember, square roots, the square root of 25 equals 5. But if you try to take the square root of negative 25 on your calculator, it says error. You can't take the square root of a negative number. So when we ask for domain, the, the inside of the square root has to remain zero or positive. One way of writing this is saying the inside, whatever is on in the inside, has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's up equal to zero or positive. Greater than zero are all positive numbers. So when I solve for x, I get the 15 to the other side. It's a minus 15. I'm going to add 15 to both sides. Then I'm going to divide by 3. It's 3 times, so I'm going to divide by 3. And I get x is greater than or equal to 5. So a way to write this in interval notation, well, first let's graph it. Here's 0, here's 5. X is greater than or equal to 5, right? It equals 5 or it's greater than. 
Uh, the way to write this in interval notation, you put a bracket because it equals, and then it goes all the way to infinity. Uh, so we write it like this. We start off at 5, it equals 5. And then it goes all the way to infinity. You can never touch infinity, so you always use parentheses. This is the way to write the answer in interval notation. X starts at 5, it equals 5, and then it goes all the way to the right to infinity. But it never can touch infinity. So this is interval notation. Our answer for domain and interval notation. Rationalize the denominator. That means, once again, get rid of the radical on the bottom of the fraction. The easiest way to do that for this type of problem is multiply this by 1. If you multiply this anything by 1, it doesn't change it. Um, so what I'm going to do is negative 2 over the square root of 5. I'm going to multiply it by 1. By the way, when I multiply it by 1, I'm going to change my 1 to look like the bottom of this, uh, this fraction. Do you see? I want it to look like the bottom. And I am multiplying it by 1. The square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 is 1. Uh, so I didn't change any meaning of this problem. This is still the same problem. I multiplied it by 1. The top Negative 2 times the square root of 5 is negative 2 square root of 5. You can't multiply something on the outside with something on the inside. Uh, but if you have two things on the inside, you can multiply those. You squeeze them together and multiply it. By the way, the square root of 25 is 5. And do you notice it says rationalize the denominator. The denominator is the bottom of the fraction. There is no radical on the bottom of the fraction anymore. That means it's been ra rationalized. Rationalized means get rid of the radical on the bottom. We did that. This is my answer. We don't care if there's a radical on top, a, a root symbol on top. It, when we say rationalize the denominator, we just say you can't have that radical on the bottom of a fraction. Evaluate this to two decimal places. So you have to put this in your calculator. Um, so let me do that for this one. The fourth root of 25. So on the TI-30X, I'm going to hit the 4 first. Uh-oh. And then I'm going to hit that radical symbol with the X. That puts the 4 there. 4 through to 25 is 2.236. 4 through of 25 is 2.236. It says two decimal places. So I look to the third decimal place. It's five or more, so I add one. 2.24. There's my answer using uh, the calculator. And you'll have two of these type of problems on the test. So be prepared with your calculator. Uh, next problem around this to two decimal places. Um, I don't think you need to, <laughs> but we can if, if you want. I mean, you could put this in your calculator. Um, remember, you can break uh, radicals apart when they're multiplying or dividing. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 100 is 10. Uh, this reduces to 1 half. Uh, if I want to put the decimal equivalent of this, I get 0.5. I can just put this in my calculator, too. The square root, this time I did the square root of, what was the problem? <laughs> 25 divided by 100. Square root of, I'm going to put a fraction in there. 25 
divided by 100. And I arrow out of there, hit enter, and do you see how it gives me one half? And the decimal equivalent of one half is 0 0.5. All right. Simplify this problem. Uh, just know the top of this power, the top of a fraction is the power of it. The bottom of the fraction is the root. So, um, so this negative power says flip it. <laughs> um, I wonder how I want to approach this. Okay, this negative power, negative power only has one meaning. Flip whatever it's attached to. It's attached to the eight. That negative power is, the, let's just look at it as a negative power. If a negative power just says flip the eight, eight in reality is eight over one. So if I flip the eight, I end up with one over eight. So in reality, I'm ending up with one over eight to the four thirds power. You see, once you do the negative, once you, the negative just tells you to flip whatever the base is, this is the base. Once I flip it, the negative is gone. The four thirds is still there. Okay, so the easiest way, once again, the top is the power of the base, the bottom is the root. So I am going to take the third root first of one eighth. So that's the, the you see, that's the third root. Um, and then once you do the third root, you have to take the fourth power. See this, the, uh, the, the bottom is the root, the top is the power. The third root of one eight, well, I can flip, I can break this apart. Remember any fraction uh, I can break apart. The third root, and it always goes to the fourth power. The third root of one is one, one times one times one. The third root of eight is two. So once I third root both of those, I have one half to the fourth power. One half to the fourth power is one to the fourth power over two to the fourth power. One to the fourth power is one, two to the fourth power is 16. The answer to this problem equals 16. Oh, equals one over 16, sorry. Alrighty. Simplify this. Let's put it in our calculator. Square root of negative 100. And hopefully you recognize that right away. You can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, so the answer to this, it's not a real number. I think in the homework you wrote down, it's not a real number or there's no, there's no answer. There's no solution. Uh, whatever you want to say, you can't, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. You can take the third root, the fifth root, odd roots are okay, but you can't take the, the, uh, square root in even root, fourth root of a negative number, sixth root. Any even root, you cannot take the uh, root of a negative number. Um, simplify this problem. So there's a number outside of parentheses, so we have to distribute that. 7 times 8 is square root of 56. And 7 times 10 is the square root of 70. Um, so we distribute that 
And we still have to simplify. Try to take as much stuff out of the radical as we can out of the square root. Um, 56 is 8 times 7. Uh, you could also say 4 times 2 times 7. This is the square root of 56. 70 is 2 times 5 times 7. If, if I break it down to prime factors. Now, do you notice right here, this square root of 4 is 2. So, I mean, you can break this apart for the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 7. Uh, and the square root of 4 is 2. You can't take the square root of 2 or square root of 7 and take anything out of there. So we're going to leave that as square root of 14. So we broke 56 down to uh, 4 times 14, which is a square root of 4, which equals 2. And here, I don't have 2 of any same number, so it stays the square root of 70. And nothing pops out of there. Nothing simplifies there. Uh, so we had to distribute first and then try to take as much out of the square root as we could. Uh, I could take a 4 out of there, the square root of 4, and it equals 2. So this would be the final answer. Those don't add together because they're not like terms. And I think this is the last problem. Solve for x. If you notice here, you should be able to spot this right away. Uh, I'm not going to mention it, but this is how I would do it. Get the radical by itself like we did before. Uh, and then square both sides. Uh, square root and square cancel. Negative 12 times negative 12 is 144. If I get the 3 to the other side, uh, I get 141. And then divide by 5, x equals 141 over 5. Now, if I plug that back in, you have to be careful. This is my answer. Uh, let me plug this in. 1, 5 times 141 over 5 plus 3. The 5's cancel, and I'm left with 141 plus 3 is 144. The square root of 144 is 12. Does 12 equal a negative 12? Do you see the other side is negative 12? You have to realize the square root of anything is not going to be negative. You can't, the square root answer always, always has to be a positive answer. Uh, even roots, if it was negative, you could have a negative answer. You can't take the square root of anything and get a negative answer. So this does not work. There is no answer for this problem, no solution. Because you can't take the square root and get a negative answer. Well, that is the test in a nutshell. It pretty much covers every single problem on the test. Uh, I think there are 14 problems on the test. I think we pretty much covered everything we needed to. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, let me know if this video helped.